Nico Rosberg, welcome to you. Tell us what is Extreme E and what are you trying to achieve with it? Extreme E is a new motorsports championship. It's based on fully electric off-road buggies. And we're really here to raise awareness for climate change, um, but also have local impact with projects that we're supporting. So it's really the first sport, sport that's built on a social purpose. And talk us through the locations that you've chosen for the various races and why they've been picked out. So we've carefully picked these spectacular locations around the world, like, for example, racing uh, near the glacier in Greenland. But unfortunately, at the same time, these locations are the ones that have been damaged most by climate change. And we're racing there because, first of all, we want to support the local initiatives and the locals in their fight against climate change. But also, secondly, we want to raise awareness for climate change and really show people around the world what's happening around, uh, around the planet. And has your experience with Extreme E made you reflect at all on your time in Formula One? Any environmental regrets? Formula One, let's not forget, has already done a lot also for mobility. I mean, we've been pioneering lightweight materials. We've pioneered the turbocharged engines, pioneered hybrid engines, which is a great contemporary uh, powertrain solution at the moment, very efficient. Um, but at the same time, I'm also proud because F1 is doing more and more um, to also become more sustainable, uh, pledging to be carbon neutral by 2030. And this is where Extreme E is really trailblazing. We're already a carbon neutral event now, uh, powered by hydrogen energy, um, and we're doing a lot, you know, really launching these initiatives around the world to have real impact, tangible impact locally. And that's what I love about Extreme E. OK, Nico, stay with me, because in a moment we're also going to be speaking to Adam Bond from AFC Energy, who supply the power for the Extreme E cars. But first, uh, we can show you now what the racing looks like. Uh, these pictures here are from the first race, which took place in Saudi Arabia. Johan Christofferson doing the switch, and on that switch they picked up a one-minute penalty, and it really ate in what could have been a really nice lead for them. They would have been top qualifier. They were about four So, Adam Bond, welcome to you. You're involved in the technology technology behind the fueling of these cars, hydrogen fuel cells. So explain to us how they work and just how green are they? Sure. Look, hydrogen fuel cells is, is a zero emission power generator, really. Our systems that we've uh, designed for the Extreme E uh, championship from, from, from racing in Alula all the way through to Greenland, Amazon, at every one of the locations that Nico's referenced, you know, the idea is to generate zero emission power to charge the cars, to promote and be fully consistent with the sustainable message of the uh, of the Extreme E uh, Championship. So uh, we are generating zero emission power, it's displacing diesel generation, and uh, it's really big, it's a first, uh, first of its kind for, for international motor racing and, and, and we believe international sporting. And we saw some pictures, Nico, of that first race in Saudi Arabia. So talk us through it, how did it go? I'm so proud. So we as Team RXR, Rosberg X Racing, we dominated the whole weekend <laughs> and came away with a win, the first ever Extreme E race win, um, and that makes me very, very proud. So, um, and as you know, equality is also a big part in the sport. So we, wanna, we wanted to create a platform which really allows women equal opportunity uh, to the men. Um, and so every team has a female and male driver. And both, my, uh, uh, both Molly Taylor and Johan Christofferson, who are our two drivers, did a fantastic job out there. And uh, yeah, it's really exciting to get going and, and be leading the championship in this way. And now looking forward to Senegal, which is the second race at the end of May. And Adam, a big part of Formula One's emissions actually comes from international travel, doesn't it? So give us an idea of how you're trying to minimize air freight. How are you doing that? Okay, Extreme, we've taken a lot of uh, the initiative here and, and, and are using uh, the St. Helena uh, as a form of uh, sort of Royal Mail shipping uh, or boat to, to move all of the cars, all of the equipment, you, yeah, our fuel cell around uh, from, from race to race. So the idea is that, uh, as it says on the side of the, of the ship, you know, not electric yet. Uh, this is all about creating that sort of move towards a more sustainable championship, and that includes the movement of, uh, of freight from location to location. So, uh, yeah, we're very, very, very pleased to be on board that ship, I think, as we speak. And, Nico, what can Formula One learn from what you're doing here? Let's, let's open this up bigger. What can the sports world learn of what we're doing here? Because the sport can be such a powerful vehicle for positive change. And we want to inspire the sports world in this direction and everybody and everybody who's following, all the fans around the world. Let me give you a few examples. I mean, look at Arsenal. 
they have a battery system in their stadium, which is entirely filled with renewable energy sources and which powers then their entire 90 minute matches. So their, their matches are completely CO2 neutral. So this is a, a soccer team that's really leading the way as well. The Olympics are going climate positive by 2030. So there's various examples, but it's really about embracing all the fans and, and creating a movement with the whole sports community to really uh, do our part. You know, everybody needs to do their part against climate change. And, um, and this is what we're about. We want to trailblaze. And Adam, what about not just sport, but the, the wider decarbonisation of industry? What part do you think that hydrogen can play in that? Look, I, I fully endorse what Nico said. This is not just about motor, motorsport racing. This is about decarbonising an industry which is very much heavily reliant on diesel, whether that's temporary power for construction sites, temporary power for, for, for sporting races, all the way through to decarbonisation of maritime. It, it, it starts to create that impetus. Uh, motorsport and, and, and sport in general is a tremendous platform to bring people together and, and actually create messaging around that. And, and for us, this is about decarbonising a race, but hopefully creates a platform for a far greater decarbonisation. We've got a long way to go before we get to sort of net zero aspirations of governments and society. And, and this is all about creating those, those steps along that journey. And Nico, I can really feel the enthusiasm that you have for this project. How does the job satisfaction compare to winning Formula One races and titles? Well, thank you for asking. That's so beautiful for me that I wasn't sure if I would ever, ever be able to relive the emotions that I had in Formula One when winning. And yet now here winning the first race, I really, those emotions came back to me. Um, and it was so beautiful. So I'm very, very fortunate to be able to uh, relive some of these emotions now through Extreme E. Well, Nico Rosberg and Adam Bond, we appreciate your time. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you.